Hello guys, Dan here, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video I will show you how to paint uh, these uh, Yao Kong remotes for the Yu Jing army from the code one. And uh, I will include a little bonus here because these guys came with uh, four weapon options but it's only two of them. Uh, if you're on a budget and you don't want to buy two extra packs, I will show you how to magnetize the weapons so you can easily swap them uh, between the models. So it's very convenient. So if you want to run uh, different weapon options, it should be no problem at all. So without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Uh, so this will be applicable for any remotes that you have, uh, Panasonic uh, or O12 or Eugene, it doesn't matter, the, the principle will be the same. So first thing uh, that I'm going to do will be to uh, just dry fit the weapons and to see uh, which part is the access part, so that I have like a vision uh, how much of the excess part I want to cut and replace it uh, with the magnet. I have these uh, two millimeter magnets that I bought uh, somewhere on Amazon and actually they came with the appropriate uh, drills uh, which are the same size so you can uh, fit them in your models. So uh, now I will uh, drill a little hole, uh, just a one millimeter hole so I can fit uh, my magnet inside. And on the weapons I will cut the like one millimeter, one and a half millimeter part of this uh, uh, metal that goes into the socket and then I will glue the magnet instead. I'm using a normal super glue for this. Uh, just here you have to be careful uh, with the polarity of magnets because you don't want to glue the opposite uh, polarities on the different sides. Uh, then it will be possible to connect two magnets. Uh, the easy trick that I do is that uh, I already put a uh, super glue on my uh, remote, uh, but then on the gun that already have a magnet connected to it, I just add uh, a new magnet so it connects uh, with the correct polarity and then I will just uh, slightly fit it into the socket uh, so it uh, catch the super glue and it stick there. Just be careful not to put uh, too much super glue and then glue everything together. Oh, a little demonstration here, so everything is glued and dried and everything has collect polarities. So you see it's very convenient, I can put the gun, I can change the angle of the gun in any position that I want. So if I want it to point down or up, uh, it will stay because these magnets are really strong. And as well, uh, it holds pretty good. So you will see now I will like a shake a model like a crazy and there is no way that these uh, parts will fall down, so you won't be able to lose them. And the best thing is everything is interchangeable, so if you one day want to run one list and the second day you want to run the other list or swap the other guns, or if you have some extra guns with the previous models, you can put the magnets and run two of the same options. I primed all the models with the Wraithbone spray and uh, don't worry about the magnets, uh, if you go with the paint over them they will still work perfectly, so don't stress about it. Uh, weapons I will paint separately. And our first paint that we'll apply on these models will be a Black Templar Contrast. Uh, you wanna apply this in one uh, very thick coat and you will use this color straight from the pot. So I went uh, around the model and all these like uh, metal uh, parts that are not, not part of the external armor, I painted them uh, black. And as well, I painted all the weapons uh, with the one uh, very thick coat. Uh, 
if it's not enough you can go with the second uh, coat if you want your weapons to be darker uh, but I will come back later and finish up the weapons so for now I will just leave them uh, like this with the black templar contrast so this is how our remote look at this stage so you can pause here and uh, copy the same skin as I did before proceeding to a next stage next color I will use is the Griffhound Orange so I will use this color as my base and as my wash and the undercoat from my yellow so actually uh, only thing that you need to be careful is to don't go over the black parts and from the rest uh, cover everything with the one thick coat uh, only thing that I would like uh, to ask you to do is to not to create any big pullings on the model so wherever you see that uh, the paint is uh, pulling and collecting just uh, dry up your brush and collect uh, the excess paint uh, so here it is the ugliest uh, stage of our model but from this point everything will start looking better so it's time to start uh, highlighting the model so our first color will be Averland Sunset and uh, I will put this color on my wet palette and add a few drops of water so it flows better then I will start slowly working on a panel by panel and covering like 95% of the panels but only leaving the recesses uh, dark which will be our shades and uh, just to let you know this color is super transparent and uh, we are working over the orange uh, so we will have to do this in a two or three uh, very thin coats so don't stress out after first or second coat if you can still see under the color so you see here this is the one coat this is the second coat and this is after the third coat of color so this is the result that you want to achieve and the coverage uh, on your model and for my final highlight I pick up a flash gets yellow and I will go all around the model and highlight uh, every single edge of these uh, armor panels uh, so take your time and slowly go and draw uh, straight lines uh, on every edge or every connection between two panels every outside edge uh, every side edge uh, so just go all around and do everything because this will uh, give our model the the final look and we will do the same with the black parts uh, the color of choice will be administratum gray and uh, we will go around the model every single sharp edge put a little line uh, armor panels on his uh, legs uh, just every single edge all four corners so just go around and do everything and the model will look great uh, if you like uh, you can try to dry brush this i don't advise it but you can do it as well it will look good so just be careful not to go over our yellow panels for all these uh, green lights that the model have uh, we will use a cyber 8 green and we will just uh, take our smallest or our pointiest brush and just uh, paint the inside of these uh, sockets uh, with this uh, green color For our highlight uh, we will take a mood green and just put a small dot in the middle of the, the green light. Uh, 
uh, for the exhausts uh, at the back uh, I will do the same thing. I will use uh, Evil Sun Scarlet and uh, put a little dot in the middle and then later I will come back uh, with a Fire Dragon Bright uh, or any other uh, bright orange that you have and just put a little orange dot in the middle. Now it's time to do the racing stripes, uh, so I will start with the Celesta Grey. Uh, so because we want the stripes to be white uh, uh, and I will use this as my base color and uh, I will just uh, slightly, very lightly sketch it on the model. Uh, the thing uh, with this color is like even if you make a mistake just go back to Avalon Sunset and it will be very easy to fix. So don't be afraid just to try. Uh, so I'm copying actually the art uh, from the box. So I will uh, first uh, sketch it uh, very lightly and then I will come with a second coat and just uh, reinforce this because this will be my base color for the next uh, paint that you will apply. After I was happy with the look of my uh, previous color, uh, I will pick up Ultron Grey and this will be my final color for these uh, stripes. And uh, even uh, if, uh, because we have a Celestra Grey down, uh, still uh, two very thin coats are needed to have a good and even coverage. Uh, so take your time and just go over uh, your sketch. So this is my final result. I haven't copied all of them because I thought it maybe will be too much. And uh, now uh, I will draw the little Eugene sign uh, on the top of uh, his, let's call it, head. Uh, so I will go back to Avalon Sunset and uh, just draw a little circle. Then after uh, Avalon Sunset is completely dry, I pick up my smallest brush and just ult on grey and uh, just draw the Eugene sign on top of it. Uh, now it's time to finish off our weapons, uh, so I will go back to Administratum Grey and uh, I will do the edge highlight uh, on all the weapons. Uh, so on both sides, uh, every single sharp edge that you can see, draw a little line. And then that's it, the weapons re really pop uh, with this highlight and they will really look cool. 
Uh, on this rocket launcher, uh, you can just paint these little rockets uh, with the red color and then go back and highlight them uh, with the orange as we did uh, before. And you can do the same for the lenses as well. So a little demonstration to see how the weapons fit with the model. So I was really happy at this stage. So I will transfer this model to the base that I already pre-made. Uh, if you're interested how I did the bases, I will include the video uh, in the description below. And that's it. The model is uh, completed, actually, both of them. Uh, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that I give you some tips uh, how can you utilize uh, magnets or give you some ideas for your future projects. Uh, if you did, uh, please uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It will mean a lot to me because more uh, useful uh, videos are coming uh, soon from me. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment below and I will try my best to answer it. Uh, so this is all for now. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.